Okay, so what made you decide to be a vegetable farmer in Indiana? Uh, that's a great question. That's a, uh, honestly, I'd, I'd been a, I grew up farming with my family. Um, and, and, and then our family, our farm had gotten sold right before my senior year in high school. So I'd kind of taken a different career path, which was uh, not really something I expected as a young man. And then, so I was a builder for 10 years. Um, and then as the housing market crashed um, during the mid-2000s, I was looking for, I did really that whole 10 years, I, a lot of the times I thought, you know, I'm going to build enough houses and sell enough houses that I can buy a farm and then I can farm again. And that literally was what I was um, always thinking would happen. And, and of course that wasn't the case. And then by the time the housing market crash came, I needed another option and I really didn't want a job. Um, I'd always worked for myself. And, and so I kind of started messing around with uh, the, the land that we owned. We had about 10 acres of tillable land. Um, so we planted pumpkins and watermelons. And that year, it was kind of a sandy gravelly farm, and it was a really wet year. I had this incredible crop of melons and pumpkins, and uh, I sold them all. And I kind of got fooled into thinking maybe I could do this, and that was 11 years ago. And we've just continued to expand, and and now, you know, I've, I've been able to make my full-time livelihood off of this farm for the last nine years, I think now, 10 years. Um, so I didn't ever get into it, I don't think, specifically saying I want to be an organic vegetable farmer. I got into it saying I wanted to farm again. I wanted to be able to go back to what I what I grew up doing. And, you know, the information I had when I was a young man was you have to have a thousand acres of corn and beans to be able to do this. Um, and, you know, it took a long time to figure out that uh, maybe there was some other options and vegetable production was that. And, and now, yeah, I just, I, I love the, I love the connection we get to have with our customers and, and the food we get to produce and the amount of people that we get to employ on this small piece of land. Uh, it's pretty awesome. It's a pretty incredible thing to, to be able to do. <laughs> What's it like being a vegetable farmer in the Midwest? It's a, a, definitely a challenge. You know, I think obviously every farmer across the country has all of our own challenges. Um, we have a lot of opportunity, which is great um, because there's not a lot of local food production and there's zero local food in infrastructure that's been put into place. You know, I mean, the last five years we've seen lots of growth in that area. Um, but the challenge of just getting um, people to buy our food is, is unbelievable. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's certainly talked about often in, in the media and everywhere else on local foods, but, but when it comes to the reality of how many of those people are actually purchasing um, purchasing food local, it's, it's sometimes a totally different thing. Um, so that, that's the biggest challenge, I guess. But then it's, it's also, it's, uh, it, it, it's such an opportunity, right? We have this opportunity to build a local food system. We can look to other parts of the countries who, who have a lot of these things established well, and, and we're in a really good position to um, to grow with that over the next five to 10 years. So that's an exciting part too, and it keeps it challenging, keeps keeps it evolving. and um, Yeah, so it's a fun time in Indiana for sure. Midwest, really, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how it would take me um, probably an hour to go find another person uh, producing vegetables. Especially on any scale, at any scale, it's going to take a couple of hours. You know, you might find a couple of gardens here and there, but but there there isn't any of that. Um, there is no local food distribution network. You know, there's, it's not like we have the opportunity to have co-ops coming around with trucks picking up product and moving it out. Um, you know, those all those kind of things that are probably just pretty commonplace out there are, are completely um, they're just not here. You know, and we were talking earlier about equipment. There's there's uh, no piece of equipment that I can think of really. I mean a couple of small pieces that I bought in Indiana. Everything else has to come from um, East Coast, West Coast, North or South. There's there's nothing here. You know, as much agricultural production as we have here, there's just it's all huge, you know. It's it's thousands of acres of corn and beans and that's that's a really limited amount of equipment that's around. And really specialized equipment, you know, so so anything vegetable wise, it's just not here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what's your vision for the local food system? Like what, what do you... You know, the ultimate dream of the local food system is that it's not even, uh, it's not even something that's discussed, it's the norm, you know? I mean, it's, it's just how, we, how food is moved around our um, community. You know, I, for me, uh, you know, I go to Indianapolis, which is an hour and a half away, when Lafayette, Indiana, West Lafayette Inn is 15 minutes away. There, there's no reason for me to ever have to take my food even an hour and a half away. It should just all be within our um, within our reach of our farm. We should be able to have most of our, our community come and, and get their food from us, you know? And man, if we could just have that all around all of our, um, 
metropolitan areas, it would, it would be an incredible dream, right? You know, if we could just raise the food for our communities and, and people be able to come to our place and get it, you know, it's, uh, that'd be beautiful. I don't know what the, the, the end daydream is, you know, but um, just so that, you know, right now local food is such a, it's just, it's like this marketing term that's used so much and for it to just be the norm and not to be uncommon, um, I think that would be incredible. Mm -hmm. What would come along with it, you know?